Welcome to the 28mm build. My name is Jeff Perryman. In this video, which I'm hoping is going to be short, I'm going to talk about the dreaded shingles. We all hate making shingles, and there are a lot of different ways to make shingles, so I'm not going to try to reinvent the wheel with this particular video. I'm just going to kind of talk about the materials that I use and kind of show you what I do and why I do it. Uh, so with that, let's get stuck in. But before I go into why I chose my particular scale for my shingles, let's go ahead and talk about the material that I've chose. I have done a lot of research and I have found uh, that the Strathmore watercolor paper for me works the best. And the reason for that is this right here. It's a 140 pound paper, which makes it a really heavyweight paper. And that's important because that gives us our thickness. Another reason that I'm using this watercolor paper is, and I hope I can get that in the shot there. It's really hard to see. Uh, but this paper has all these little dimples and bumples and imperfections. And that translates into when it's painted into texture that looks like rock or stone. In the case of doing slate or terracotta uh, or any other uh, rough material like that, this paper lends itself really, really well. It's also watercolor paper, so it takes paint obviously very, very well. And you can do wash techniques and it won't curl up as much. It does curl a little bit, but it does tend to flatten out. Um, what I do is I just rule out um, this is eight millimeters long here, and then I will do little four millimeter strips and cut them out. And what that gives me are these. Now, as you can see, these are really, really, really small um, shingles. And I know some of you are groaning and rolling your eyes going, oh my God, that's just going to take forever. And you would be right. This is going to be forever. Um, this is why I'm doing this video this way and not actually showing technique because I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel, as I said. I'm just kind of showing you what I do and why I do it. Now, why did I choose the scale? Um, this makes for a realistic sized uh, shingle when compared to a, a human. That is not a monster shingle. Uh, I have done this in the past, and actually I will show you the end result of using this watercolor paper. And I've done this. Now, this is the result of using that paper uh, but these shingles are just way, way too big. As you can see, these things would be just these big monster. They're almost bigger than uh, paver tiles used in our gardens, you know, for walking around. Too bloody big. So uh, when I got on this kick on scale, which is my big deal, uh, I started thinking about how big a shingle was. I measured a bunch of shingles. And I came up with the eight millimeter by four millimeter. It just felt right. And to check it out and to justify it, I come to this Games Workshop building. This is uh, from their Manor House collection. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Games Workshop buildings, not because they're bad buildings, but because the architectural details that they put into the buildings make the buildings too high status for their size. This is just a, this is not even a chapel size building, and yet it has all this motif to the emperor in here. And I mean, it's, it's gorgeous stuff. Don't get me wrong, but in terms of the status of this building, it's too much. But if you look at these shingles, they're really, really small. And this shingle in particular, where they have a hole here, I went ahead and measured it, and I was right. This one is roughly about eight millimeters long by about four millimeters wide. In fact, I think theirs is just a shade uh, thinner. Um, the one thing I do love about these Games Workshop buildings is that everything is scaled correctly. The windows, the doors, uh, the details in general are scaled correctly. And so if you ever are in doubt and you need to eyeball something, these are good references for doing that. So getting back to these, um, all I do is, is I will mix up paint and I might mix up this color right here. And then I'll paint it on the strips, both front and back. You're gonna to have to set them aside and let them dry because they will curl a little bit and you'll get all worried. But once they dry, they flatten out. That is the nature of this paper and that's why I love it. 
Uh, I will do a few strips in, in that particular color, and then I might mix in some, I don't know, gray and a little bit of black and make this darker color and do a few strips of that. Then do a lighter color like this one right here and do a few strips of that. Then set them all aside, let them dry. And when I'm done, you have a choice. You can just cut halfway through this, and then you lay them on your building in strips. Or what I'm doing is, is I'll be cutting the individual tiles out and gluing those on. And the reason I do this stupidity is this right here. As you can see, this has all kinds of variation in color. It looks natural, it's organic, it has a neat feel to it, and just, it's kind of what I'm after. Um, the paper has a nice thickness, which you can clearly see here. I've done this before. This one has a little more weathering on it. This is Bristol paper. Uh, which both of these paper types are available at any uh, art supply store that sells, like I said, sketchbooks. You can see that these are thinner. Now, this one I've done some weathering on in attempts to, to bring it to life, and it just wasn't working for me. This one has no weathering on it whatsoever. This is just painted and stuck down. I've done nothing to this other than to fit it. Um, this feels better. This has more, more thickness to it. It feels like... You know, it's it's a, a tile. These just feel flat to me. So when you're choosing your materials, consider that. I've seen people use cereal boxes, and cereal boxes would probably be perfect, or um, like uh, drink cartons, like uh, the sodas that come in. Those are, are fairly thin cardboards, but they're not too thin like this. I think they are the heavier cardboards. They might even be more than 140 pounds. And so those are material choices you can use. Just be warned that if you're using really thin colors of paint, because those boxes tend to be brown, um, they're not going to take the color as well, or that might be part of the technique you're after. So consider your materials when you're doing your tiles. Consider what you're going to say about your building with the tiles. Um, what I'll be doing in the future here, I'll be doing a follow-up to that, is that all of this is for the Hunter's Shack, which I will be putting these really small ones on. Uh, and I'll do a follow-up with this, but I didn't think I needed to sit here and show you how to paint or how to cut something. Um, it was more important to talk about scale and to talk about the type of material that I'm choosing to use. And these are the end results of using uh, that material. These are just bigger than what I would have done. Um, my barn was oversized and my, my tiles were oversized. So I'm trying to correct that with my wooden and a brick cottage, which will be using very similar tiles to this as well. So anyway, that's about all I have to say about materials and tiles for this particular video. So that wraps it up for this video. I hope that this was informative and gave you uh, some good information to work from. Um, as always, I cannot do this without you guys. Please subscribe, uh, tell your friends about the video, um, hit the little bell down there so that you know when I put up new videos, and comment. I love hearing your comments. I want to hear what you have to say about what I'm doing. I want to hear what your thoughts and ideas are, and I would like to hear what you guys want me to do. So I look forward to hearing from all of you. Again, please subscribe. My name is Jeff Perryman, and this is the 28mm Build. Thank you for your patronage.